Last week, we de-extincted a wolf. So does that mean that there's reptile species that are extinct we could bring back? The answer is yes, and here's the top five. There are five species of reptiles that we could bring back, maybe more, but these are the five most likely. This obviously is inspired by last week we brought back the dire wolf, and it doesn't really matter what you believe or you think or your scientific opinion, if it's just a gray wolf with some genetics or it's a dire wolf or somewhere in between, the point is, we've got a cute little murder puppy that we didn't have before, and it's, 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 I want to pet it real bad. So, this is not a place for debate, although you can in, in the comment section below. Like, keep in mind, I am not a scientist, I'm a comedian who started a YouTube channel. So, we're gonna do our best here. And whether you believe it's nothingness, like a whole bunch of nothing burger or not, let's just enjoy the scientific achievement because there is no debate. It was a scientific leap forward. Yes, yeah, science! And even if this isn't a new species, maybe this means that we can save species that are definitely going to go extinct or functionally extinct, which we're going to include in this list of five reptiles. But again, it's going to be up for debates. Is it a new species or not? But keep in mind, especially with reptiles, we as humans decide what a species is. Look at tree monitors, for example. It wasn't even until in your lifetime, likely, definitely in mine, that we separated the blues from the greens from the yellows and so on. In an evolutionary standpoint, these animals were all together and weren't separated on islands until the end of the last glacial period, which in evolutionary terms is next to nothing. It's a blip. So we as humans decide what a species is more than nature does. For example, there used to be four species of Antaresia, now there's three. We used to talk about western hognose snakes, all of a sudden that's been speciated, so we change things all the time, keep in mind. Number five, Cape Verde giant skinks, or grand skinks. These are an animal that were very, very recently thought to be extinct. We're talking about these outlived the thylacine, or the official date for the thylacine, which I could go into, but this is a reptile channel. The Republic of Cabo Cape Verde is an island nation and island state on the west coast of Africa, pretty far away from the mainland. These islands, again, weren't separated until some time ago, 30, 40,000 years ago, something like that. And that was when this species started to decline. But it wasn't natural elements that made the species go extinct. Which, by the way, the whole point of de-extincting animals is because they could be reintroduced where they are needed. So the question is always, should we do it? And with this animal, the reason that it went extinct in the first place is because of us. Because we introduced predators that ate this animal and then we collected this animal and they became more and more popular in the 1800s and then we started to collect them and send them off to zoos and then all of a sudden there were no more. So how could we bring it back? Well there's tons and tons of specimens that we preserved tons of them, and it wasn't even extinct until the 1940s, so we've got lots and lots of really good DNA that we could use, and of course I'm not going to get into how CRISPR works and gene editing and stuff like that, but either way we could have a very, very close version of what this is, if not the exact same species, running around its old native range. Another thing I think we should de-extinct is the fun of buying reptiles, and now we can thanks to today's sponsor, Palm Street. Buying reptiles is always fun, whether you do it at an online market or at an expo, but wouldn't it be so cool if you could interact with other people who wanted to buy the same animal, have a little friendly competition, and be able to ask the person who's selling the animal questions in real time? That is what Palm Street is. Palm Street auctions are really fun because you can actually speak to the person behind the camera showing off that animal. Hey, show me the head, show me the underside, show me the tail in real time. Whereas if you were to buy it on an online marketplace, which there's nothing wrong with any of those either, but that way you're gonna have to send emails back and forth. And by the time you get a response, there's probably other people doing the same thing. Maybe it's sold, maybe you don't hear back for a few days. This is instantaneous. The auction goes up, you ask questions, and within a few minutes, you either have the animal or you don't, and then you wait for the next animal to come up on auction. And whatever animal you want, Adam, I will pull it out. I got the high expression camos, I got white tree frogs, blue tongues. Palm Street is my favorite way to buy animals and plants, by the way. And at the end of the year, this is where I'll be selling all of my animals that are available for sale. A real community with no bots, a place where I trust that I'm not going to get scammed, and just something that's really fun and new and unique for our hobby. I think this is a great leap forward in the way that we treat our animals ethically when we buy and sell. 
So hit the link below, follow me on Palm Street and see everything I'm doing on my favorite platform. Number four, even more recently extinct, the Round Island Burrowing Boa, which has a very close relative that's still around. Now this burrowing boa didn't go extinct until 1975, or that's the last sighting that we have. Of course, this is in a place where there's not really a lot of people looking for snakes, or there wasn't in the 1970s anyway. So it is possible that they're still around, we just haven't seen them for a while because that happens, not all the time, but we've had that happen recently where we haven't seen an animal for, you know, 80, 90 years, and then all of a sudden one appears. It is one of the very few snakes that lives almost its entire life underground, hence the name burrowing boa. Another really interesting thing about the burrowing boa is it actually lays eggs. If you know much about boas, you know most boas give birth to live young. Also, most boas are from the new world, not the old world. But either way, it's a animal that lays eggs, which is super duper cool. And its native range is something like half of a square mile, 1.5 square kilometers. So it's a really narrow area that it could live, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't be introduced. Because why did it go extinct? You guessed it, humans. The challenge is gonna be to find reliable DNA because we don't really have lots and lots of samples like we do the skink that we just talked about. But there's a really closely related species of boa that is still alive and we could use that animal to help edit some genes so that we could bring back this animal. Number three, the blue-tailed skink. Not to be confused with the five-line skink, which is still alive and well, although endangered in some parts of its area. We're talking about, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the Latin name, but this is the one we're talking about. And this one actually isn't technically extinct. It's extinct in the wild. This animal's from the Christmas Islands. The Christmas Islands, by the way, their capital is Flying Fish Cove, which I always thought was like really interesting name for a uh, capital. They were alive and well for a long time in that area. They didn't even see a sharp decline in their species until the 1990s. And then by 2006, they were an endangered species. And only four years later in 2010, they were extinct in the wild. Now what's good is we do have zoos and research facilities that are breeding them in captivity, at least two of them that I know of. And they are producing these animals, but skinks are weird and most of the time, or a lot of species will give live birth. These don't, they lay eggs and they only lay two at a time most of the time. Also because we introduced the predators that made them go extinct in the first place along with our own wild collection, there really isn't much room for them to go back into the wild. So I think it's amazing that we still have these animals, but I think this is the most likely one because it's the most straightforward. We have them already. The problem is because we have so few of them or we started off with so few of them, a lot of inbreeding happened, so we'll never have the genetic diversity that their wild population once had. But their entire genome was sequenced in 2022, so that's pretty cool. Can you believe that we don't have some storage database of genomes of animals that we have currently? Like, you know, like the seed bank where they have seed stored just in case? We don't have that with animals. That's crazy to me. Number two is kind of a big deal, the reunion giant tortoise. Giant tortoises used to be a big thing until very recently. We're talking about the 1800s here. And the reason that a lot of these species went extinct is because they're on tiny little islands. Reunion, for example, is in between Madagascar and Mauritius, where the first animal we talked about was, and then Madagascar where lemurs are. So right between there is Reunion. This is an island nation where, frankly, there was people who used to go and take these tortoises for food. They were so numerous and so unafraid of humans, sailors would show up, put them on their backs and stack them in the hulls of their ships so that they could eat these animals on long trips. The problem is because they had no defense because, well, they have a small island, they have nowhere to go, and there was no regulation, they were just hunted to extinction. And the hunting was really easy because you just walked up with your buddy and picked one up because they're really heavy. So you probably needed like two people. The good news is they have close relatives like the Eldabra tortoise, which is very closely related or close enough that we could use that animal to possibly edit some genes and then make the species or the closest thing we had to the species again. But they're different enough that I think it'd be worth it. Really long necks, long legs. They looked really, really unusual and unique. And it'd be very cool to have these animals again because they would actually fit in really well in their old habitat and they wouldn't destroy the ecosystem. There would actually be an ecological benefit for them being reintroduced. Number one on the list, let me know in the comments section right now before I tell you what it is, what you think it is, and you probably already know, 
It's the Pinta Island tortoise. We're talking about Lonesome George. This is Lonesome George. And in 2012, he was the very last of the Pinta Island tortoises to go extinct. Well, the very last of the pure-blooded Pinta Island tortoises. Pinta Island is part of the archipelago of, you guessed it, the Galapagos Islands. So it was one of those giant tortoises. Very recently, we found hybrids. The genetics would show that it's half Pinta Island and half another species. And we didn't find these animals until very, very recently which means that maybe their parents are still alive and maybe their parents are full-blooded Pinta Island tortoises. Now we think that the species is extinct, but what are the odds that we go to Pinta Island and we find a pure-blooded Pinta Island tortoise? Pretty slim but it'd be pretty cool. There you go, five species of reptiles that we could probably, possibly, maybe bring back from extinction and de-extinct. Let me know in the comment section below what you think would be the coolest species to de-extinct, if it's possible. And as always, thanks for hitting like and subscribe, Patreon, videos early, discounts on merch, all that and more for as little as a dollar a month. Because we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.